it is the worst intraocular lens ever. I am so unhappy that I had this lens in my eyes. Why is this possible to put so terrible lenses in the people's eyes? You can find a lot of similar comments on different internet forums or YouTube videos and all of them related to what type of lens? What exact lens model? Correct. It's related to any existing IOL model in the world. What is the reason why you could be a victim of the bad IOLs and author of this type of feedbacks? And how to avoid this? Let's find out in this video. Hi there. My name is Alexey and you are at iSurgery Explained Channel IOL Advisor related to intraocular lens selection for your particular visual needs. More details about me and the channel in the description to the video. Generally, there are two types of reasons why people could be absolutely unhappy with any IOL type available. And there are, I would say, two big groups of the reasons. The first one is subjective and related to expectations and reality. And the second one is more objective and related to clinical part. So let's find out the both types of um, pro problems and let's find out what you can do to avoid getting into, the, into this trap. So the first group relates to so-called expectation and reality issue. The problem here is that talking about eye, about sight, about vision quality in um, our daily life, we never refer to numbers like we cannot say, well, today I see 2020 or um, 6x6 or whatever, or in 10 lines, and somebody tell you, well, today I see 5 lines. Even if you know that you have some issues with your sight and you know your visual equity, in the daily life you never refer to these numbers. We always saying it's good vision or bad vision. Uh, subjectively, it's absolutely different stuff. For instance, for me, it could be a good vision if I could read that level of letters on that distance and I'm happy with it. And for somebody else, maybe for you, the good vision if you can see the bird's eye color in the front of the neighbor's roof. If I tell you today I see very well, I'm referring to my experience. And if you tell me I see very well today, you refer to your experience. The problem with IOLs here is um, that talking with a doctor who will promise you that you will see good with that type of lens, you may miss the point of what exactly doctor means good versus your expectation. Because for instance, for doctors, what is good vision, it's 10 lines at the far distance and that's it. Plus, uh, there is a previous vision experience and there are two types of vision experience. I mean, your whole life visual experience and uh, if you had a cataract or other eye uh, condition it might be your visual experience pre or the disease and during this condition or the disease you have now just an example i had one customer one patient asking for my consultation just one week ago and he had a, be a beginning cataract but his vision is still 2020 he sees well 10 lines and he is slightly myopic. He is about minus three and he can read extremely well in near, at near. It means he can read very, very small letters. And while we talked with him, he confirmed, yeah, I read very, very small letters, but I want to be spectacle free. I don't want to use glasses at all as I'm doing surgery. And theoretically and practically, no glasses at all means any type of full range of vision lenses. By the way, we have four big group of lenses, but I will talk about this later. So, if we are talking about full range of vision lenses, there is no single full range of vision lens in the world which will give um, uh, this um, quality of vision at near to see these tiny letters. Why? Because it's technology. We cannot copy the natural lens. And for this particular person, expectation is to see well at near and to read. And doctor will confirm, yeah, man, you will read with the type of lens because the lens is intended to provide reading abilities. But reading abilities for that guy would be worse than he knows from his daily life because uh, his previous vision experience was reading uh, tiny letters. But with any presbyopic lens, he would not be able to do it. He will be able to read normal size letter, maybe smaller than normal size, but not the tiny ones. And for him, it will be decrease in vision quality. And he will say, ah, it's a shitty IOL and I'm not happy. But 
If this guy will postpone his surgery for, I don't know, six months, his cataract will decrease his vision quality. He will lose ability to read the letters, even no, or normal sized letters at near, because cloudy lens will block the light, it will be blurred vision, etc. And any type of lens will increase and improve this, uh, his visual quality. And that's why he will, after surgery in this case, he will say, ah, oh, well, it's beautiful lens, I'm absolutely happy, I can read now. Well, maybe not as good as I could read in 10 years ago, but now it's way better than six months ago. I think you got the point. So the problem here is just subjective part of the equation. And honestly, it's always a big issue in patient communication between doctors and the patients, and the situation is worldwide similar. I have experience talking with patients from United States, Canada, India, Australia, New Zealand, Israel, Europe, more or less everywhere. The nature of healthcare system is that it's not easy, not evident to explain to the patient all that stuff. So, generally, expectation versus reality. The good doctors could explain you and set your expectations. The doctors who are not as fluent and as genial in these topics may not. And so it's many factors and I hope I will, I will explain to you the first group and you, I believe you got the idea. If not, uh, feel free to ask me in the comments below, I will try to explain. So let's move to the second part. Second part is uh, clinical part and it's related to so-called residual refraction. What does it mean? If you talk about the eye anatomy, eye is a um, kind of camera, whatever, but eye is a ball which has two basic lenses, the cornea, the lens itself, and this optical system of the eye aimed to focus light rays back to the retina to make it sharp, to make a sharp image on the retina, easy. But to have this optical system aligned, we have to calculate the IOL power and IOL position between cornea and retina to align everything. The problem is the eye is not a rigid structure, it's flexible, it's life structure. You cannot fix the lens exactly in the certain position. And that's why you're always trying to estimate effective lens position where it is located versus the retina and cornea. Plus you have to calculate the power of the lens. Nowadays, it's not easy to find an exact equation despite we calculate the lenses for 40 years. Honestly, if we compare uh, the quality and precision of lenses calculated 20 years ago and nowadays, it's a huge difference. Nowadays we calculate them more precisely with uh, next generation formulas, with artificial intelligence, with uh, better diagnostic equipment, etc. But we still don't have an ability to, in 100% of cases, ideally predict the lens position and the residual refractive power of the eye. It doesn't mean that it's a bad news. The good news is that we are able to predict and calculate the entire model and try system in adequately precise way. It means that in majority of cases, a person who undergoes a cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange will end up with a good vision, with normal visual acuity at far, and depending on lens model and intermediate near. But it means that it will be good enough but for some patients, again, referring to the first point, for some patient it will be not as good as he could expect. Why it is happening? So, first of all, different lenses, different lenses manufacturers has a different precision uh, uh, standards. And for instance, if for one lens, for a high quality manufacturer, it's written that its um, optical power is 21 diopter, it means that inside of the box the lens will be exactly 21 or plus or minus maybe 0.05 diopter. But for other manufacturers, it could be different point. For 20 diopters in the box, it could be 20.4 or 21.6. And it's also lies inside of the ISO standards. Another reason is um, centration, um, iris, uh, etc. and a lot of stuff behind that and um, human factor as well. Honestly, uh, when I'm talking with uh, surgeons or I'm invited to find a reason of refractive surgery error, sometimes following the whole patient journey in terms of calculation, we could find some human errors, something like that. But sometimes it's not evident. We check everything, everything seems fine. We double check all the calculations, we measure that again, and we couldn't find any reason why it has happened. And as you can imagine, if the residual refraction or the optical system of the eye is not perfectly aligned, 
it means that patient will end up with a non-perfect vision. And especially if a patient was aimed to get rid of glasses and he paid for expensive lens, but the lens is not performing well and he needs the glasses, it means that the lens is bad, but it is not. Honestly, I'm working in this industry for many, many years and more or less all lenses perform well if it's used as it's intended. Of course, different lenses uh, perform in a different way. Some lenses are better in terms of contrast sensitivity, in terms of visual equity, in terms of precision. Some lenses say it's not as good, but generally, more or less, there is no single lens on the market which is really shitty lens. All are good. All they are good, but the problem is to use it properly. Well, uh, we have talked about the um, refractive errors and unfortunately in my practice many surgeons are a bit reluctant to talk about these issues um, with the patients. Well, I could understand it um, because uh, you as a patient come into the surgeon uh, to read the cataract or to find spectral freedom and you are afraid of the surgery and if surgeon will talk about you about the possible problems I don't think it will motivate you too much. Well, it's different point of view to this uh, issue, but it is what it is. What else could happen with a uh, lens which will result in non-happy patient's uh, experience? Well, it is another issue which is called dry eye syndrome. Dry eye syndrome is a condition which you could be aware about. It's a feeling of artificial body or sand in your eyes and probably you're familiar with that. But in many cases this situation is in subclinical phase when the quality of tear film on the cornea is not imperfect and could be de de detected on a diagnostic and it affects the quality of the image with IOL but patient is not aware of this. And after the surgery this problem increases and affects the quality of vision of crystal lens. So talking about general problematic uh, field of the eye surgery and eye walls exchange, you might have a feeling that it's a big, big problematic field and it uh, doesn't make sense to make surgery if not necessary. What can I tell you? Of course, uh, it's better to avoid any surgery which is uh, possible to avoid, but if you're willing to get rid of glasses, if you need surgery due to cataract, you have to know that uh, cataract surgery and lens exchange to intraocular lenses, it's uh, the most commonly and most widely performed surgical procedure worldwide. Nowadays, the technology is so well tuned, so safe and efficient that you should not be afraid to undergo the surgery. Of course, problems happen everywhere, but the probability is very, very low. Like if you're flying an airplane, it's always a risk of airplane crash but we are flying every day. The same with eye surgery. The most important here is to find the best, first of all, IOL type and then IOL model for your particular case. In this case you will be happy. You have to know that nowadays we have four big groups of intraocular lenses. It is standard monofocal lenses, it is enhanced monofocal lenses, it is extended range of vision lenses and full range of vision lenses. The difference between the group is a um, range of vision which different IOL I'll uh, give to the patient. Talking about range of vision, we're talking about this near to intermediate range because every type of lens gives you a high quality far vision. But then in this range of, let's say, two meters from your eyes, you need uh, pseudo accommodation. You need out of focus feature which is not exist in the modern IOLs. How to select the best IOL for particular your case? Majority of cases, a good doctor, if you find one, and a good clinic will help you to this. But if you're not sure about uh, finding a good clinic or your good doctor is busy enough to um, talk with you or he talked with you but you don't understand, I encourage you to try to visit my website iwilladvisor.com where, where you can uh, try uh, the clinically proven and clinically relevant IOL questionnaire which will guide you through seven simple questions with a bit tricky uh, types of answers but this questionnaire will automatically suggest the optimal IOL type for your particular case. And having this information in mind and having this information on your screen and in your email, you can go to your surgeon and discuss the lens type is really suitable for you, take into account your medical history, your eye conditions, and probably during the conversation with the surgeon you will define some factors which will influence uh, on your final lens decision criteria. Once you selected the IOL type, think about particular IOL model inside of the group. Talk to your surgeon. Think about the um, 
is a well-known brand or not. What particular benefits emphasizes on this particular model? Because uh, different mo models like in a consumer electronic, like in clothes, etc., has some specific advantages, maybe beneficial for you and not beneficial for me and vice versa. So, Honestly, it might be, looks like selecting an iWell and iStudio is very complicated. Yes, it is. It's like a flying airplane with a lot of switches, uh, gauges, uh, whatever. But if you know how everything works, the airplane safely brings you from New York to Washington. You simply get in and get out and you are happy. So coming back to the question, how to not be a victim of the bad IOL or not be an author of these comments that that particular IOL is totally shitty. Easy. Think about your particular visual needs. Try IOLadvisor.com questionnaire and find the best IOL type suited for your particular needs. Discuss with your doctor particular model which will fit to your individual needs, including medical history, including your personality, your needs, and trust your doctor. If you find a trust with your doctor and you talk with him on openly, and if you're a doctor and you're watching my video or you have been listening to my public lectures, I encourage you to be open with a patient. Don't hide information. Be open telling, telling that it could be something wrong, that it could be some compromises, etc. It creates a trust. And honestly, if we trust each other, if patient and a surgeon in one boat, and they are in one boat, because the aim of both is to get rid of glasses, get rid of cataract, or simply to improve quality of vision, improve, improve the patient's sight. If patient and the surgeon works in a trusty manner, if they trust each other and they collaborate, the healing and the process of visual recovery is way better and way more successful.